The fun thing about working on this patio is that as I take the sticker off my glasses, my wife goes nuts because I just don't pay attention to little things. But the beauty of this patio has been that, you know, I just take used things and kind of work with it and remodel it and make it fit and then add plants and then it looks good. <laughs> Without adding the plants, you know, some of these things would look just like junk, you know. And some people used to say, well, once man's junk is another man's treasure. Well, it's not really that way with God because God adds his Holy Spirit to us and then we are precious in his sight. That we're no longer just fallen creation, but we become a new creature. And so, the way to maintain a relationship, you know, with God is, from my understanding of who Jesus is and how he lives inside of me, is to spend time with him, to know him. I mean, there are people that have relationships that are long distance, you could say, or that they're born that way or that they you know just they're a family member but they haven't talked in years and for me you know I think of a relationship as you spend time with the person you care about and that's what emotional is it's a chance to spend time with the person you care about so in daily life we want to hear what the person we care about cares about us and what he would say who shall be able to stand? Who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like a fuller's sop. I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and of peoples and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. These are they which came out of the great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. Neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb, which is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them and shall lead them unto living waters, fountains of waters, living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. You know, when I read that, I think about, you know, the tribulation period that is coming. And being that we live in these latter days, you know, there's a realization that maybe you will agree with this and maybe you won't. Maybe the Lord will say to you that you're going through the tribulation period or you're going to be raptured or you're going to be spared because you're going to die a natural death or a car accident or some other circumstance where by you don't know what day or hour that your departure from this life is because after all who knows when they're going to encounter death you know and be separated from the flesh so that your spirit goes back to be with the Lord if you're born again that is and because of that, you know, there's a realization that there can be differences of opinion on the rapture. That there could be those who God hasn't revealed it to because they don't need to be consumed or concerned about that because what he has them focusing on is the most important thing that they need for their life today. Now, others may be focused in on that because they likewise God has brought them to the realization of the full counsel of God where they can sit down and look at all the scriptures and know that this is what it says and this is what it says and it has to fit together so all of it has to be complete. But sadly, when they find out that there's a complete picture, then they take pieces and they add things to it sometimes and say things that aren't true. For instance, the rapture is true, but some of what people say isn't. It's only what we think it could be, like... You know, the world gets raptured and all of a sudden there's this major catastrophe. Well, that's not in Scripture. That people get raptured is, but not that there's a major catastrophe. Well, but, 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 if there are two in the field and one shall be taking the other left, then there's got to be a catastrophe. What if two people are in the cockpit? Well, what if? Do you think God is 
you know, the author of confusion, that he should cause destruction and confusion because he's going to zap people and then they're going to go, whoops, you know, and bingo, go into a tailspin and die. Sounds a little weird to me. I mean, it's a nice thought if you're on the one side, but it's kind of a weird thought if you're on the other. So the point being is that it doesn't have to be exactly the way that people think it's going to be. It has to be the way that Scripture says, and we don't know. We really don't know. Will there be a great revival after the rapture? It doesn't say that either. The Scripture says nowhere is there a great revival. There's only two things that we know of. One is that in the book of Revelation, there is a church that's spared from the Great Tribulation. That's one out of seven. That's not good statistics. <laughs> then we're also told that there's this great multitude in heaven that we don't know where they came from. So we say they had to have been taken from this place to this place, and how they got there we call the rapture. But it's still not a factual statement. The only factual one is the one that Jesus said, which was writing the letters to the seven churches and each one he told some of them they were going into great tribulation because of that in this devotional there's a warning there that though you may go through it or you may go into it and you die as a martyr god will wipe away your tears so i can't sit here you know knowing jesus and having him share with me his word and understanding what he's telling me specifically and not knowing where you're coming from and tell you, oh yeah, you know, you're going to go in the rapture, no problems, you know, get ready, Jesus is coming, there's no problem, you're going to go. I can't say that to you. You know, many are called, but few are chosen. Paul said, pray you be counted worthy. I can't create some doctrine of partial rapture or some doctrine of complete rapture when the rapture itself is still a question mark for some people. I do know there is a snatching away. I do know that Jesus sent angels to Peter and took him out of prison. I do know that the angels went and rescued Lot out of the city. I don't know why angels couldn't come and rescue you from where you're at without causing all this devastation and destruction that people talked about. So you see, it doesn't have to be the way your imagination sets it up, but it does have to be the way Scripture fits. So whenever you come into some of these doctrinal things, and then you read something from the Word and God says and speaks to your heart about something you've been thinking and go, oh, you know, that might be true. Talk to God about it. Think about it. You know, listen to what your pastor might be saying or your teacher or, you know, the Internet or whatever and then sit down with, you know, a Bible, you know, and read. But then also take the time and take the moments to consider well what Jesus is saying to you how he's speaking to you because he may be preparing you for who knows tomorrow you might be hit by a car or you might not you might be blessed out of your mind with grandchildren or guess what you might have an aneurysm and it'll cut loose even before you finish this devotional we don't know those days or the hours or the times or the seasons but we know this the beauty of knowing Jesus means that whether it's that, or whether it's the rapture, or whether you go into tribulation, whatsoever it is that you go into or you go through, if God is in you, then God is with you. And God will take you through it, and he will wipe away your tears. And that's what emotions are all about. Knowing that God is to be trusted with your life, with your future with your safety, with your health, with your wife, with your children, with your future plans, and with sometimes no plans except to trust in Him with all your heart.